Hi, this is Lorraine with Chat and Craft with Lorraine Tierney, and I'm coming on tonight to show you how to make a diorama card. And I'm just going to get things set up here in my camera. I don't know why I can do a practice one and have everything all lined up. And then I put the camera back in, and it's never the same way twice. All right, let's just move this up a little bit so that you can see as much as possible. Okay, so um, tonight we're going to play with the On the Horizon bundle. So this is the stamp set. Um, it's a cling stamp, so it's the red rubber. It has some sentiments and it has some scenery and it comes with um, some dies that do mountains and hills, a great fence and grass and trees, and we'll use some of those dies tonight too. That's the stamp set. This is the paper, and I don't have uh, the little wrapper anymore, but I think it's, all, it's also on the horizon or new horizons paper and you can see that I've used quite a bit of this and I always save all these great scrap pieces um, especially with this set I die cut a lot of things out of here like flowers out of here and they come out with just a little bit of um, variation and coloring on them. Hi Mary! Thank you for joining us. Um, so this paper is just gorgeous. It's very water colory. This is the back side and then the, well, this is the mixed up side. There's a little bit more scenery on uh, one side and more abstract colors on the other. And you can see I've used quite a few of these. I think there's four of each design. So I'll show you a few of the things I've made with this and then we'll make a diorama card. And hopefully I haven't messed up what we need for tonight. We're going to use this sheet tonight. Okay, so here are some other cards I've made with um, this set. So here's one that mostly uses um, just the dies and it's cut these dies are cut from the um, on the horizons paper so I did mountains and then a reflection like in a lake um, and it's a very monochromatic card I really like the colors of that one here's one uh, that I did with the sailboat and this circle is punched from a piece of the on the horizons paper and then the rest of it is from the Let's Set, Let's Sail stamp set. I seem to be on an evening evergreen um, little bent, I guess. So this one I've used the dies to cut some grass and I cut the grass to match and have it look kind of natural that it's around that fence. And the fence is angled like that, so it looks like you're walking in. It's welcoming. Um, and then this card opens up, and so my background continues. And it even pretty much matches with the piece missing from it, which is pretty cool. I like that. So that's another one. Uh, here's one where I stenciled a little bit of a background and I did the mountains, um, and again, I cut this top layer of the mountains from a piece of the DSP and the reflection from the DSP also. And then um, I was playing with the all squared away bundle, and the paper behind this is all from the New Horizons thing. Ah, uh, Gail, you're liking the ever, evening evergreen cardstock too, huh? It's beautiful. I've been using so much of it. So I haven't put sentiments on these cards yet. I'm going to wait, but this is all, these backgrounds are cut from it too. So it's, it's quite fun. I've used it quite a bit. 
for different um, die cuts, for backgrounds, for all kinds of things. So this is a diorama card. Remember those dioramas that you made in elementary school and um, out of a shoebox? Well, this is kind of like that type of card. This is a diorama card. It stands up. This one has been a little crunched. When it's flattened out like this, it fits into our regular envelope, which I thought I brought one over here, but of course I don't see one right now. But here's here's a regular card, and I'll show you it's the same size as a regular card when it's flattened out. But then it stands up like that. Um, so it's really, really fun to make. Um, I think kids would enjoy getting it. I think anybody would enjoy getting it. So this is one I've done with the um, Oceans of Inspiration set, which I was going to have out here uh, because I use, I'm going to use the clouds, but I think I've already die cut the clouds. I am going to use the um, cloud die from this set tonight. So this is the card that we're going to make tonight. Um, it's with pale papaya and the greens. It's looking a little bit darker um, in this light. And I have quite a shadow. Maybe I should turn off this light. Let's see what happens if I turn that off. Maybe that's better. No, I'm going to turn it back on. Okay. So this is the one we're going to make tonight. Um, I have some fence in there, some trees. Oh, these little pebbles, um, enamel shapes. These come with the On the Horizon suite. I have a hill in there. I don't know if you can see it. And the fence. So we have lots of stuff in there. And I'll show you how we're going to make it. I have a blog post on chatandcraftwithlorraine.com that has the instructions and the measurements showing this card, the um, ocean card. So you can go to my blog and get all the measurements there. I'll try to give them um, tonight as well, but if I don't, that's where they'll be. So we're gonna start with two pieces of cardstock, and these are five and a half by four and a quarter. So they're finished card size. And we're going to put them in our trimmer with the um, five and a half side across the top. And we're going to do a little bit of scoring. I'm going to score it at half an inch and at one inch. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And I like to use the um, right hand side of the cutting channel when it's just a little measurement rather than have it kind of hanging off and bumping into something over there. So I'm just going to do a half inch and one inch again. And the same thing on the other piece. A half an inch and one inch, turn it around, half an inch, and one inch. Okay. I don't think we'll need that again, but I'll leave it nearby. Now, before I do any folding on those lines, um, we need to cut our circle out of one piece. So I'm using the layering circle dies, and this is the second largest um, of just the plain circle, not the scalloped circle. So I'm gonna bring in, I did just get the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine, and I was a little bit wary. I have to tell you, not everybody has loved their machines, um, but I am loving this. It's so light, it's so little, and it has worked great. Um, it comes with all the bases that you need for regular embossing folders, the thicker embossing folders. It's got the directions on it. I'm really enjoying this. Um, 
and I would say this is a great time to order it. It's on sale for $48. If for some reason um, yours doesn't work right, just call Stampin' Up! or call your demonstrator. They will make it right. Um, they are working great. So now my die fits just great in here, so I thought I could show you how to use this little one, but my piece of paper is not going to fit. But we'll do some die cutting later that that will work. So I'm going to step off camera for just a minute and run this through my bigger stamp and cut and emboss machine that will shake the whole table if I bring it over there. So I just um, centered this left to right and it's closer to the top than to the bottom. Hi Dennis, thanks for tuning in. All right, so now um, we're going to decorate the back side and work on building the card. I like to have the folds in there just so I can get an idea of how you're going to see things. So for the top one, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna fold the bigger piece to the back and then the smaller piece to the front make a Z fold and I'm going to burnish that with my bone folder. Okay and so that's the top piece and the back piece is going to be the opposite of that. We want the pieces on the back to fold in. It's kind of like one side is convex and one is concave. Just don't ask me to figure out which is which. But that's how we do this. Okay. So that's your front and your back and one of our last steps will be to attach those together. Um, now we're going to put a piece of paper on the back there, the paper that will um, show through and have a lot of our design on it. So I'm going to do, I'm going to make mine the same way that we made this one. So I'm going to take the top most portion of this paper and it's going to be three and a quarter inches wide and four inches long. So I'm just going to cut that. I'm going to start with the four inch cut. And save this because you can cut beautiful flowers or trees or other things out of that too. And then this one is three and a quarter. My scoring blade just fell out. There we go. And I'm going to adhere this to that piece right there. I'm going to use my liquid glue I like the wiggle room and you should have a nice border that's just about the same all the way around okay and then I'm going to layer some more things in there we're going to cut a hill We'll use this, and I already cut a fence, but now you can see my little mini machine. I have a scrap of evening evergreen here, and this is just the hill die that I'm going to place in my sandwich. And they do say on this machine to stagger your plates just a little bit, so my bottom plate is out just a little bit more than the next plate and then the next plate that helps it to catch because it is such a little roller that's going in there pardon my hand in the middle of the camera I'm trying to keep it from shaking the whole table so it goes through very easily and there is the hill that we're going to use 
just put that back in so I don't lose it. So we're going to need to trim this a little bit. And I'm just going to lay it there and give it a snip. This doesn't have to be, you know, scientifically correct. Just want it to fit in. And I'm going to layer up double dimensionals on the back of this so that it will have a little distance from the back of the card. So I'm stacking two dimensionals. Whoops, I'm going to need a mini one there, I think. Two dimensionals right on top of each other. And now I want that hill to be a little bit visible inside the opening, but I don't want I don't want to see the bottom of the hill or that straight line either. I want to just see a little bit. So I think I figured out about an inch up and I'm just kind of setting that there. And I think that looks pretty good, like that. Maybe move it just a hair. Okay, so I'm gonna put that down and then I have my little piece, whoops, my little piece of fence. Make sure the pointed pickets go at the top. Okay, and I'm gonna glue that right to the hill. So I'm just gonna put a little glue on the bottom edges. And that will be enough to hold that there. Okay, so, so far we have that part of our scene inside there. You can see the hill and you can see the little fence. Oh! I wanted to stamp some birds, and usually I would stamp those birds on there before I adhere it down, because we're gonna have to make sure that I don't get any ink on these edges here. And these birds always confuse me as to which way is right side up and which one isn't. So I've realized if I match it up with the front of the case, then I know I've got it going right side up. And if I have some sticky notes around here, I do. I'm just gonna try to mask. Just gonna put a little something here so I don't get any ink on the edge. I'm just gonna use black ink, the memento, for my birds. Okay, make sure my card is straight. I use my grid paper to line it up and just stamp those. And I didn't go off, so that was good. Okay. I like those birds. I use these birds um, with that sailboat stamp set and some of the other scenery stamp sets as well. Okay, so now we need some little trees for the front here. And um, I did not, oh, cut those out. Actually, I was thinking I had cut this out before. I was thinking about putting it in here. You can tell me what you think. Layering that inside. I'll show you how much of it we might see. Oh, of course I can't get it to stay. Or maybe using this, I think I'm gonna use that on the outside. We're not gonna cut the trees this time. So I'm just gonna put this right on the front. You could, you know, um, I have it folded up. You could wait to fold on those score lines until you get everything decorated if you prefer that. I can't tell if I got glue 
on the end of that. Okay. So now I will just open that up and I am going to, I want to cover up a little bit of the bottom of that circle. There you go. And I'm going to do a similar, um, a similar sentiment and I'm going to use this wood plank stamp to do that. And I'm using crumb cake paper and crumb cake ink to put that on. I have a very old crumb cake ink pad. Okay. I can never tell how much ink I have. So I'm just going to put that on. I really like the wood plank design, and I'm going to stamp the sentiment on that before we die cut it out. I'm going to use the Relax, It's Your Day, and I'm going to do that in black again. And I don't have my sticker on this one, so I'm going to use my grid paper to try to make sure that I get that stamp on straight. I have to pull it off camera for a second. I'm sorry. Just to get it straight. Okay. And we're going to use the Memento Black again. And make sure I'm right side up. I'll put that right in the middle. Relax. All right, I'm just going to clean that stamp off so I don't put my hand in it. And now we will die cut out that piece of wood. And the die will fit through the mini. The paper might not, so I'll just trim that piece of paper. If you are a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you can purchase a um, Stampin' Up! lunchbox. It's one of the supply items or one of the perks, and this mini fits great in that lunchbox if you want to take the mini places with you or take it to workshops or people's houses. Um, and that lunchbox would protect it just a little bit. Okay, so here we go. Sorry for that shaking. And this is going to get popped up on dimensionals right over here. So let's put some dimensionals in the center of that. I got a piece of release paper stuck to the bottom of the dimensional. Hmm. It's interesting. Okay. I don't want that to hang over the bottom because I don't want it to interfere with it standing up. So that's what we have so far, looking good. But I do like putting a few little clouds on it. So um, let's see if I can pick these up. I cut out some clouds from um, a piece that looked like this on the back. On this one, I used um, a lightish blue and purple cloud. I'm wondering, this matches the sky that's on the inside. So I'm going to do the clouds in a different color. Like that. But maybe we'll put them on the other side, because 
I'm opposite this way. So you can see what I mean. This is where I cut the um, grasses out of. This is where I cut the trees from the last one. Um, this is the piece I cut the clouds out of. So you'll use all those pieces for lots of different die cuts and things. So I'm just going to put the smaller cloud down first. And then this one I'm going to pop up on a couple of dimensionals. Just to give it a little bit more dimension. I seem to have something sticky on me today. Those are all sticking to me. Okay, so we are just about done with this card. Now we just need to put it together. And so to do that, I'm going to use some tear and tape because I want to make sure this really stays secure and um, doesn't come loose due to humidity or due to heat. And the tear and tape is a really good, strong adhesive. Okay, so sometimes it's hard to get the release paper off. Just give it a rub with your bone folder. Pull that paper off. I didn't get that one. Okay. And so now I usually use the bottom of my paper trimmer. Let me bring that over here. To line things up. I like the square that it makes. So I would put my card right into the corner there. And then I'm going to put this one right on top of it in the corner. And it's going to line up perfectly. Eh. except when you're on camera then things never line up as easily okay so that's that one so once you get one side of it done it should just smooth out and lay down on top of the other one and then you have your diorama card just like that. Um, it stands up. It's beautiful. Now, where do you write on it? Well, you write on a three and a quarter by four inch piece on the back. But as you can see, I haven't put that on yet. Um, if I make this a birthday card, I might put happy birthday there. If it's a thinking of you card, I'll put thinking of you. I will write my message and then I will attach it to um, the card. It would be too hard to write on the card. The card is lumpy, um, so you don't want to put it on before you're ready to sign it and send the card out. So I would just keep this with the card, maybe in the same envelope, and I would know what I'm doing. But that's the um, diorama card. The post that I have is part of a small blog hop. There's just two other posts in the blog hop, and there are different styles of diorama cards that other people have made. So you might be interested in checking those out. I'd love it if you subscribed for my email. Um, I'd love to help you make cards like this at home. If you need a Stampin' Up! demonstrator or you need a catalog, I'd be happy to help. And if you'd like to share this video, that would be awesome. Then more people can um, enjoy stamping and maybe get a hobby that's fun to do and makes other people smile as well as yourself. So 
Thank you very much for joining me tonight, and I hope to see you back here again next Sunday night at 7 p.m. Have a great week and enjoy some sunshine. Good night.